So what is a liberal arts college? Let's take a look at that today. Now, before we say what a liberal arts college is, we need to talk about why it's important. The fact is, people now change jobs 11 times during their career. And each one of those switches brings new technology, new challenges, and new learning opportunities. So more important than a specific technical skill, students need to become lifelong learners so that they can thrive in this new environment throughout their career, not just their first job. And author Jeff Selingo says, Indeed, in an increasing complex world, the foundation of learning, a liberal arts education, is more important than ever. So how many schools are private liberal arts colleges? Well, there are over 1,500 colleges and universities in the U.S. 59% of those are private, and less than 200 of those are private liberal arts colleges. And what these schools focus on is exactly what employers say they are looking for. In a large recent study of employers, these were the top five skills they were looking for. One, communication skills. Two, analytical skills. Three, the ability to work in a team. Four, technical skills. And five, a strong work ethic. With the exception of technical skills, the liberal arts colleges excel in developing these other four skills, and that's what employers want. And they're willing to pay for it. The average starting salary for a liberal arts grad is just shy of $50,000, and the average mid-career salary is just under $94,000 a year. So clearly, a technical degree is not required for long-term financial career success. So how do the private liberal arts colleges stack up versus the public universities? Well, here we take a look at the four-year graduation rate, and you're reading the numbers correctly. The average four-year graduation rate for liberal arts colleges is 61%. The average for public universities, only 33%. And in fact, less than one half of these students will even graduate in five years. And it's true, the net cost per year is more expensive for the typical student. At a liberal arts college, it's about $24,000 a year. At a public university across the US, it's about 15,000. However, when we take a look at the big picture, if most liberal arts students are graduating in four years, while others are taking five or more, well then the comparison looks like this. The total cost after four years is 96,000 for the liberal arts colleges and 75,000 for the public universities. But in the fifth year, that liberal arts student isn't paying for school anymore. And in fact, they're going out and earning money. And as a nice round number, plug in 45,000, which is less than the average that a liberal arts grad will make. And the total cost of graduation now compares at $96,000 for the private liberal arts college student and $120,000 for the public university graduate after five years. This is what we refer to as the total cost of graduation. And this is what families should be looking at when they're comparing apples to apples for college choices. So at the end of five years, you read it correctly, that liberal arts grad is ahead by $24,000. And if we really dig into the numbers, we find that only 4% of undergraduates attend liberal arts colleges, and 96% are attending all other undergraduate programs. Yet, 9% of the Fortune 500 are run by private liberal arts college grads and 23% of U.S. educated Nobel laureates are liberal arts grads. 27% of U.S. presidents attended a private liberal arts college, and 14% of tenured Harvard law professors also attended a private liberal arts college for their undergraduate program. In addition to that, six of the top 10 schools on a per capita basis whose graduates go on to get PhDs are liberal arts colleges, including five of the top 10 in the field of science and math. So it totally debunks the myth of liberal arts colleges not providing strong STEM degrees. And the fact that the top science and math programs 
are admitting students from private liberal arts colleges at a much greater percentage proves the value of that liberal arts degree. So where are the schools located? Well, coast to coast, they are across the U.S. with a large concentration of east of the Mississippi and especially in the Northeast. So all the way up in Maine, for instance, Bates College, out to Iowa, Cornell College, down to Georgia, Barry College, in Pennsylvania, Moravian College, all the way out to the West Coast, Pitzer College, and DePaul University in Indiana. As you can see, there are liberal arts colleges across the U.S. So no matter whether you want to stay close to home or you want to travel across the country from the east to the west coast, from the north to the south, you can find a liberal arts college that is a good fit for you. Liberal arts colleges, they're small schools making a big impact. To learn more, you can visit liberalartscolleges.com and check out the resources there.